Welcome back to Diesel Talk. Tony Salas here again. Uh, another day of uh, repairing trucks, dealing with issues. Subject of today is inertia switch, a very common thing we have seen in Ford product. If you're not familiar with the word inertia switch, it relates to the fuel pump. And in this case, the fuel pump is, uh, which is housed in the HFCM on a par stroke 60, also on six fours. Six sevens, there you go. So in this case, let's talk about a 6.0 though. Uh, the 6.0 has inertia switch. It is designed that in case the vehicle has a sudden motion of stop, in other words, it stops all of a sudden. In this case, it's designed to have the inertial movements designed to actually open a switch. And in this case, when the switch opens, it cuts power to the fuel pump and what we call in our trade in the diesel truck, the lift pump. So let's take a look at it here on our diagrams here. So when you look at a wiring diagram of a six liter, you're gonna see that uh, we have a fuel pump here. So in this case, we're talking about the fuel pump, lift pump, and there's a pump right there. And when I see the pump, I see that it's grounded through location G100. And I also see on the other side, which should be power or positive potential going to later, letter H. And I follow this diagram, which is over here, because it sees it says, see this diagram, which means this wiring diagram itself. And in this case, we follow the H, and you'll notice it goes to the PCM. Here we can see this box right here, and this box houses the PCM. This is the PCM. In other words, the management computer or the powertrain control module. Well, it's not labeled here on 19, on terminal 19 of the computer, which is part of connector 1381A. This is a fuel pump monitor. In other words, the computer will know if there is power activated going to the fuel or lift pump. Now, we notice H here and we notice H here. So here's the continuation of this wiring. So they, they try not to put it all over the place on this model year. So in this case, we see power here and we see splice 139 over here over to splice 234. And that goes to what is still all a pink and black wire. So tied in from the lift pump, all the way to H, a continuation of the circuit, we see a splice that goes to the fuel pump monitor at terminal 19 of the connector to going towards the PCM. We also see power going over here that has, that ends in a harness right here, which is black, but then in here it's pink and black. And in this case, it goes to the inertia switch. So the inertia switch is normally closed. So in this case, it should always provide power. So like it says, even right here in the diagram, it is a safety device that cuts power to electric fuel pump. If a collision occurs, switch must be reset manually. It has a button on top, which I'll show you here in a few. Now, if we look very closely at power distribution, we see the central junction block, which is located underneath the steering column. So the steering wheel, if you wanna look at it that way. Now, in this case, the fuel pump relay is not easily accessible, something you can pull out. It is internal into the central junction block. So in the event the relay fails, you have to replace the whole central junction block here. But obviously, one of the first tests you want to do is to check the fuse, which is F2.40, which is a 20 amp fuse. So if we follow the path of how it all works is like this. First of all, the PCM is, will see a key on activation. At that point, he's going to ground at terminal five and ground the relay internal into the central junction block. Now, the block already has power, which will now energize the coil side of the relay, in turn, attracting the uh, contacts to close. Power will now be going past the inertia switch, which will go over to the fuel pump monitor. It'll show power at the monitor and it'll continue at H where it goes finally to the lift pump or fuel pump as shown here. So what are the breakpoints in the circuit here that something to be concerned? Well, the inertia switch and the relay itself. So one of the things you can do is you can test the inertia switch and see if there's power applied once you turn the key on, because when you turn the key on on these six liters, what should happen? The lift pump should be activated and turned on and the monitor should show yes on the scan tool. So with that said, let's take a look right here. Now, when I look right here, I see the fuel pump monitor. I'm looking at the sync messages, the fake I'm sick and all that, because, you know, I was doing a diagnosis on a stalling problem. So this truck came in with the fact that it was, you know, intermittently stalling. It would run for five, 10 minutes and stall. It would run for two minutes and stall. Then it would run five minutes. It was so intermittent. So the customer or the driver of the vehicle was a little perplexed because it would run, then die, then run, then die. So one of the things that we decided to do was to check the fuel pump monitor. So as we were running it, we were monitoring the fuel pump monitor and that monitor was showing that it was on. It was getting power 
towards the lip pump like we showed you in the earlier diagram. So in this case, the fuel pump monitor was showing on. As soon as a truck would stall, it would show off. Well, immediately we cycled the key off and cycled it back on again. And what happened was, is that we see that it was still off meaning there was no power going to the lift pump. Then all of a sudden the truck would start and we would see the fuel pump monitor back on again. So once again, we the truck stalled, right? We try to restart, wouldn't restart right away, but as we're turning, cycling the key back on, the fuel pump should be activated. And we saw that the fuel pump monitor was saying that it was off at that point. So that's what led us to believe that the problem is in the actual pump itself. So. Well, well, hold on a second, not the pump itself, but on the power of the circuit. So we see the inertia switch. We saw it earlier on the wiring diagram, and this is a picture of the inertia switch, which is located on the right uh, kick pan on the right passenger side, right underneath the glove box, but to the right. You take, you'll see an access hole right there, and that access hole is going to allow you to reset the button, which is illustrated here or here, depending on which diagram we're talking, and allows you to push down on it. So normally, my reaction was, oh, well, let's push down on it. Maybe it's stuck or something. The truck kept stalling. So the next course of action was to bypass it. In other words, let's bypass the whole circuit, and let's see you know, if, if the inertia switch is the problem. Now, when you look at the bottom side here, you can see the connector in view of this inertia switch. You'll see, you'll notice we see three terminals, but in reality, we only have two that we're using. So what I decided to do was we did a bypass. So here's the connector that goes to it. And in this case, we bypassed it by, here you could see my little needle clip and here's a fuse. So this is a trick I learned from a tech a while back. So in this case, we put the uh, one set or one end of the fuse into the connector. And here we can see the other end going to my alligator clip. So this was all looped. So what we're literally doing is looping these two wires right here. And as you can see here on the video, you'll be able to see that we got two wires. You can see my hands there. There's the two wires that we're looping. So we're looping those two together. And that goes to the, as you can see, the inertia switch. That's the way it looks. And it's bolted with two bolts up against the, in other words, the body of the vehicle. So, so all we did was loop it. And by looping, what we were able to do is run the truck, run the truck. And the truck kept running, kept running, never stalled anymore. And the fuel pump monitor kept saying that it was on. With that, by bypassing this inertia switch, the truck never stalled anymore. We weren't losing fuel pressure. And in this case, we had to replace the inertia switch. There you go. So, so in a nutshell, that was the problem. So one of the things you got to watch out for when you're monitoring lip pump pressure on a six liter or a six four, like I said, is uh, use an easy tool. Take a look at the fuel pump monitor. See if it's seeing any power headed towards the, the fuel pump. So, and just to show it one more time, let me backtrack here to the diagram. Remember that in the pump, has wiring and power going to it. Here you can see letter H, letter H continuing on. So if there's no power here, which I didn't have anything going to the lift pump, in this case, you may want to use the fuel pump monitor to your, you know, in other words, to help you out. So if the fuel pump monitor says that is off, that means he's not seeing any power. So one of two things is not sending, well, three things. We can have an open in that pink and black wire that goes all the way back to the pump, or most likely we got an a intermittent issue with the fuel or the inertia switch, and we got a relay that might be the problem. So yeah, we can have relay go bad in the central junction block, but for the sake of argument, I did have power with key on to this dark green and yellow wire at the inertia switch. So we did see that. So in this case, that told me that maybe I should just bypass. So what we simply did is bypass, and that's what you saw earlier there, so. Okay, so use the fuel pump monitor, as we just said, to your heart's content to help you diagnose issues with these uh, trucks there, so. How's that? Hope that helps. Short, quickie. Um, if you got any questions, send us a message or make a comment in here in the comment down below there. So that will help. And uh, hope you keep watching our videos. Subscribe if you like. If you don't like it, well, let me give me a comment anyway. So there you go. Any comments are provided. So with that, hope that helps. See you next time on the next video.